Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, then you can watch it by clicking the card above. We appreciate everyone who could attend LEAF's third annual Ending Age-Related Diseases Conference, which we feel was a huge success. As always, we encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Anyone who's broken a bone knows the pain and frustration of the healing process. Researchers from the University of the Basque Country, Portugal's University of Minho, and biotech firm BC Materials have developed a new material that may speed up bone regeneration. This new material incorporates magnetic nanoparticles that are dispersed within a 3D matrix of a silk-derived protein known as fibroin. They can be made to vibrate using a magnetic field which deforms and stretches the structure, encouraging cells to migrate into it. In vitro lab tests have shown that this magnetic material stimulated bone cells to reproduce much more quickly than would have otherwise been the case. Finally, the tech's developers are hopeful it could conceivably be used to regrow more than just bone. Moving on, epigenetic alterations, which are one of the proposed reasons we age, are changes to gene expression that our cells experience as we age. A new review stresses the importance of these epigenetic changes and their crucial role in the progression of aging. The new review, quote, takes the popular view that epigenetic alterations are for the most part a cause of aging and the changes they bring create some of the damage and dysfunction of aging, end quote. If you'd like to learn more on epigenetic alterations, then you can click the card above to watch the X10 episode. You can also find a link to this episode in the description below. And we're excited to soon have a new series on epigenetics on X10. For our next story, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is a disease of the lung tissue that causes it to become stiff and scarred, leading to shortness of breath. <sighs> My grandmother suffered from IPF as well as emphysema and COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, after decades of smoking. So the last few years of her life were pretty debilitating and it was no fun for our family watching her suffer as well too. So put down that cigarette if you're still smoking. Seeming to develop due to a combination of genetic and environmental factors, IPF is an age-related disease that currently has no cure and very limited treatment options. IPF is linked to telomere dysfunction. To learn more about telomere attrition, click the card above to watch this X10 episode. In 2015, a team led by Dr. Maria Blasco from the Spanish National Cancer Research Center developed a superior mouse model of pulmonary fibrosis that lacked a telomerase gene, which prevented these mice cells from expressing telomerase. Recently, this team showed that the same telomerase therapy can successfully treat age-related fibrosis in old mice. This shows that the treatment works in mice that have not been genetically modified in any way and whose fibrosis is simply the result of normal aging. The study results strongly suggest that the researchers have found the molecular basis for the association between aging and pulmonary fibrosis. This research holds great potential and may offer a solution to all types of fibrotic diseases. The next steps will be to translate these findings to people and we are confident that human trials for the telomerase gene therapy are not too far away now. We've all heard of the circadian rhythm, but have you heard of the circadian locomotor output cycles kaput? Clock, for short, is a protein transcription factor that regulates the circadian cycle of our cells, and unfortunately, clock levels decline with age. In mice, clock deficiency is known to reduce lifespan and promote age-related pathologies, such as cataracts and dermatitis. Researchers recently studied human mesenchymal stem cells and confirmed that the age-related degradation of the circadian machinery happens during cellular aging as well as organismal aging. Genetically modified clock deficient MSCs demonstrated dysregulated circadian rhythms and more senescent phenotypes. They also reached senescence much earlier. Importantly, these cells exhibited extensive DNA damage, one of the major causes of cellular senescence. On the other hand, clock overexpression rejuvenated aged MSCs. Restored expression of clock, or the heterochromatin associated proteins that it assists, alleviated aging defects in MSCs. The researchers hypothesized that clock functions as a scaffold protein that tethers heterochromatin components to the nuclear matrix. Due to the immense complexity and the evolutionary character of cellular chemistry, 
proteins can perform multiple and additional roles, which seems to be the case with clock and chromatin stability. Consequently, the upregulation of clock could potentially become a two-pronged anti-aging intervention simultaneously restoring circadian rhythms and reducing cellular senescence via improved chromatin stability. Now wouldn't that be nice? For our final story, we have disappointing news coming from Unity Biotechnology, a company working on senolytic drugs. A senolytic is among a class of small molecules under basic research to determine if they can selectively induce death of senescent cells and improve health in humans. Unity Biotech recently announced the results of a phase two clinical trial of their candidate drug UBX0101 for treatment of osteoarthritis of the knee. Unfortunately, during the 12-week trial, there was no statistically significant difference between patients taking UBX0101 and those taking placebo instead. Almost immediately after Unity announced these disappointing results publicly, Unity's stock price dramatically declined. The news is disheartening. But while it might be that senescent cells don't play a big role in knee osteoarthritis, there are other possibilities. It's possible that the type of senescent cells being targeted by UBX0101 are not present, either in sufficient numbers or at all, in this specific pathology, which is knee osteoarthritis. Given these results, Unity does not anticipate progressing UBX0101 into pivotal studies and will instead narrow its near-term focus to ongoing trials for its other senolytic drugs for ophthalmologic and neurologic disease programs. These results highlight the necessity for better biomarkers of senescence so that appropriate drugs can be devised. This story is a reminder that science and particularly science relating to medicine and the biology of aging is very hard. But it's also very important because remember that aging and age-related diseases is currently taking the lives of about 110,000 people every single day on average on this planet. So it's incredibly important science that we will stay devoted to here at Lifespan News. So on a more optimistic note, I'll leave you with one of my favorite quotes, which comes from famed inventor Thomas Edison in regards to his attempts to construct the electric light bulb. Edison states, quote, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work, end quote. So as always, if you found this video valuable, then there's a few free and simple things that you can do very quickly to help us on our mission. First, if you haven't already, make sure you like this video. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Share this video on social media. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed and you have that notification bell turned to all notifications. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video, at least as healthy as you are now.